Hey, what's up everybody? It's your girl Merle, and today we're going to be tackling a fairly controversial topic, I would say. I was never really gonna make this video because I don't feel particularly passionate about fake meat. I don't eat it a lot, honestly. But I recently did a video where I tried Juicy Marbles like vegan muscle or loin. People went hog wild in my comments. <laughs> Without watching, I'm gonna say no. I'm sorry, but a person that calls themselves a vegan while wanting fake meat clearly doesn't have the heart. Oh, I bet real meat is healthier than this sunflower oil infused contraption. If you don't want it, then why do you want it so bad? Have a steak, enjoy it. If meat is so gross, why do vegetarians keep trying to emulate it? It's the circle of life. If you wanna really be vegan, be vegan and eat vegetables. Unless of course you're like my granddaughter. I think she would really love prawn. She can't eat gelatin either. And it reminded me of the age old question. Say it with me. If you're vegan, why do you want to eat something that tastes like meat? Honestly, like there's a lot to talk about when it comes to fake meat because people are concerned with if it's actually healthy, why in the world you'd want to replicate something that you don't eat anymore. There's a lot to unpack. So I thought, why don't I take a stab at it? So I started thinking like, if fake meat is supposed to be, you know, obviously better for animals or better for the environment, what's the problem? Why are people so skeptical? But also. So I wonder, is it really better for you? Is it actually healthy? I would like to know. I don't eat it all that often, if I'm honest with you. I pretty much stick to whole foods in my day to day. But I do think it's worth investigating, especially if people are gonna be throwing around claims like this. I kinda wanna know what's the deal. So today we're gonna be putting fake meat to the ultimate test. We're gonna look at the ethics, the health claims, and even the ingredients you might not want to see. Very exciting. Let's get into it. So in this video, I'm going to be breaking down what is actually in fake meat. Is it healthier than real meat? And why in the world? world do vegans want to eat it? Let's start with why does fake meat exist and why do vegans want to eat it? So here's the tea. Fake meat is nothing new. It's been around. You can trace the origins back to ancient China, India, Japan. We're talking back to like 200 BCE. Usually in association with Buddhism, fake meats like seitan or tofu would serve as a meat substitute for monks. Obviously that's different than something like an impossible burger or beyond meat. Then in the 19th century, John Harvey Ooh. Kellogg, who you might know from some kind of well-known cereal brand, he was a member of the Seventh-day Adventists and he created this peanut based fake meat. Then of course you look at the 2000s and you've got companies like Impossible or Beyond Meat, Gardein, and a whole host of other ones. And then if you want to talk about the 2020s, we've got lab meat on the rise, which I actually tried lab meat for a video if you want to see. Yes, that means I literally ate meat that is actually meat technically, but nothing had to die for us to get it. I explained it all in the video. Go watch it if you want to. For many people like myself, it's not the taste of meat that was ever the problem. It's the process with which we get it. I didn't stop eating meat because I didn't like the taste of meat. I was a dirty meat eater. I had one summer where I ate hot dogs every day. I used to eat Slim Jims. I liked the fat on steak. I would eat other people's fat from their steak. I was deep, deep, deep in it. But the more I learned about how we get the meat that ends up on our plate, the less appealing it became to me. So for some people, especially when you're first transitioning out of being a meat eater, or you're trying to eat more plant-based foods, it's nice to stick with what you know, you know? So before you go about learning how to cook all these vegan whole foods, maybe you wanna replace the burger you would have had with an Impossible Burger. That's a pretty quick, easy, seamless switch and it hits a lot of the same flavor notes. At least I think the Impossible Burger is pretty convincing. And I've said it before and I'll say it again, this whole question of why would you eat fake meat really depends on why the person decided to go plant-based in the first place. Did they do it for their health? Did they do it for the environment? Did they do it for animal welfare? Some combination of the three? That is at the root of this question and its answer. Now I've seen claims saying that like over 90% of the people who purchase plant-based fake meats are actually meat eaters themselves. I don't know how accurate that is because I think it was released by Impossible or Beyond themselves, like the brands. Now that could also be not so great because if you are a meat eater and your only vegan meals are these highly processed foods, that's not totally ideal either. And it also isn't really representing what it could be to be plant-based. It's one part of it if you want it to be, but it doesn't have to be your whole diet. But of course, depending on your goals and reasons why you wanna make the switch, plant-based options 
options can improve your health, and if animal welfare is your concern, help you sleep at night. Now, this whole claim may not totally be true. However, all these sources rely on household panel data. So it's really measuring like what a household is purchasing, not an individual. So, you know, somebody who's a meat eater could be buying a plant-based thing, but they could be buying it for their daughter or their son or their partner. That doesn't mean that they necessarily are consuming it. So that's just something to consider when you're looking at like the data around this. I just wanna be fair and like put it all out there and, and try not to be biased. Okay, now the next question, what's really in fake meat? The, the concern that I see all the time is that it's full of chemicals and additives and all these ingredients that might not necessarily be better for your health, even though maybe it's advertised as healthier than real meat. I wanna say, I'm not your doctor. I'm not a doctor at all. So I can't tell you what to put in your body and I wouldn't dream of trying to tell you what's the best option for you. Everyone's different. If health is your concern, I just wanted to lay out the pros and cons of all of the options. You know what isn't fake? My need for order and planning in my life. I really wish I was better at planning things out. Man, I could use some help with that. Which is why I'm so proud to be sponsored by Hungry Root. If you've ever felt like meal planning and grocery shopping take up way too much of your time, or you're trying to eat healthier and you just don't know where to start, Hungry Root is about to change the game for you. Hungry Root is basically your personal shopper and nutritionist all in one. You tell them your dietary preferences, health goals, and favorite flavors, and they'll fill your cart with high quality groceries and easy delicious recipes that fit your needs. And the best part, the more you use it, the smarter it gets. So you're always getting recommendations that are tailored to you. I've been using Hungry Root for a while now and honestly, it is such a lifesaver. As someone who loves cooking, but just does not always have the time to plan and shop, Hungry Root has actually taken a lot of stress off of my plate. Everything is super fresh, so there's no like junky additives and they have a ton of plant-based options. I get the plant-based box. Plus, all of their meals take 15 minutes or less to make, which is way faster than waiting for delivery. They also have an amazing assortment of healthy snacks, smoothies, ready to eat meals, and even supplements. So if you've been wanting to eat better without the hassle, now is the perfect time to try it. Now you can take advantage of this exclusive offer for a limited time get 40% off your first box plus get a free item in every box for life. Click the link below or go to hungryroot.com and use code MERLE. That's 40% off your first box and a free item of your choice for life at hungryroot.com with code MERLE. All right, let's get back to the video. Let's talk about some of the common ingredients that you might see in fake meat. Soy protein or pea protein, which comes from plants. Methyl cellulose, now that's a big one, and that one was actually in the Juicy Marbles loin that we tried that sparked this whole video. From what I could tell and what I could research online, it's not dangerous. Coconut oil or sunflower oils, and those are there to add the fat component and add some juiciness. And then of course we have natural flavors. I'm always suspicious of natural flavors. I just wanna know what the flavors are. Just just list the flavors then. If they're natural, what are they? Is it beets? Is it carrots? What is it? Just tell me what it is. That's not even just for vegan meat alternatives. That's for any food. It's just a little too vague for my liking. I wanna do this as fair as possible. Let's go through the health pros and cons of fake meat. You know, when we're talking about this, different fake meats are made differently, period. Are we talking tofu or are we talking Beyond Burger? A lot of the time we're talking about the Impossible Burger or something like the Juicy Marbles loin. That's what really gets people irritated. The pros, zero cholesterol, because cholesterol comes from animals and animal byproducts. There are no antibiotics or hormones. One big thing is that the plant-based meats tend to have way more fiber than traditional meat real meat. They have no animal fecal contamination. Come on, you know that's a win. It's estimated that somewhere around 48% of grocery store chicken samples have fecal contamination. Plant-based meat doesn't. Okay, now let's look at the cons. Some fake meats can be highly processed. Many of them contain isolated proteins, binders, synthetic ingredients, which removes them very far from being like a whole food option. Some of them are very high in sodium. If you've watched my ranking videos, You'll know I've talked about this at length, especially I think when we were doing the vegan chicken ranking. I was trying to really call out the sodium content in one of those videos. An Impossible or a Beyond Burger can have like two to three times more sodium than a traditional beef patty. Of course, it depends on the patties in question. Fake meat uses industrial oils, which is a comment I see all the time. Many fake meats have like sunflower oil or coconut oil on them, and those are high in saturated fats. Certain plant-based meats may not have the same nutrition value in the sense that they may not contain the same vitamins and minerals you can find in some meats unless they're
they're fortified, which at this point, a lot of them are, because I think they kind of learned that was a selling point and something that's important to people as well. Some of the healthier fake meat options might be more simple, like seitan or tempeh, lentils, beans, again, whole foods wherever possible, but if you want them to be kind of processed, seitan can have really good protein count and a lot of them are fortified. And tempeh, which comes from fermented soybeans, is rich in protein and probiotics and has plenty of naturally occurring vitamins. Okay, and now we're gonna look at the pros and cons to health benefits from real meat. Obviously not all meat is created equally. Same thing with fake meat. It's not all gonna be the same. So it's not gonna have the same easy blanket explanation. So I'm gonna break it down. We're gonna start with red meat. That's like beef, pork, lamb. Some of the nutritional benefits are that it's high in protein, iron, vitamin B12. Some of the health risks include the fact that regular consumption of red meat has been linked to the risk of heart disease, type two diabetes, colorectal cancer. One study found that consuming 100 grams daily can raise your diabetes risks by 10%. And the World Health Organization classifies red meat as probably carcinogenic to humans. If we're looking at processed meats like sausage, bacon, ham, the benefits are really more just that they have protein and lots of flavor. But some of the risks for these more processed meats are that they contain very high levels of sodium. And the daily intake of 50 grams of one of these processed meats is associated with a 15% higher risk of type 2 diabetes. And the World Health Organization has classified processed meats as carcinogenic to humans. It is also linked to colorectal cancer. And of course, it's worth noting, factory farm meat has a heavy reliance on antibiotics because of the close quarters animals are kept in. So when they injure each other and themselves, they are less prone to infection. Unfortunately, this can contribute to antibiotic resistance in humans. Now let's talk about white meat. I feel like white meat is a lot of people's go-to healthy meat fat and fish. Some of the benefits are that it is a lean source of protein with a lot less saturated fat than red meat or processed meats. As far as health risks go, overall it is considered healthier than other meats. There are some studies that think that there's a potential link between high poultry consumption and certain cancers, but there's not hard and fast evidence on it, so I don't even want to like pretend that that's like a substantiated established thing yet. But of course there are things like, you know, the fecal matter we talked about earlier, just things to consider. Again, I'm not saying it's bad, it's good, it all depends on why you want to eat it or why you don't want to eat it. If health is your number one thing, it's definitely a healthier option than red meat. Then let's talk about fish. Now fish is even featured in things like the Blue Zones diet, which is mainly pushing a plant-based diet saying, you know, having things like meat like once or twice a week. And often this is fish in this case. Some of the benefits of fish, protein, rich in omega-3 fatty acids, which can promote heart and brain health. And of course the risks are that more and more fish are being found with mercury content in them which can pose as a huge risk for somebody and their brain health, but especially pregnant women as well, because it can affect the fetus. Now, of course, it depends on the levels of mercury, right? They say that smaller fish are safer to eat, like sardines, anchovies. It's the larger fish that eat all the other fish that tend to contain higher mercury levels. But I think what we can agree on is overall, whole foods and whole food sources of protein are gonna be the best at the end of the day. So for me, beans, lentils, legumes. I know what you're thinking, but what about the environment? Environment. See the visual cues to go with the subject matter? Pretty impressive. I've said it before and I'll say it again. The decision of whether or not you want to replace real meat with fake meat depends on why you want to stop eating real meat. If it's the environment you're worried about, fake meat uses way fewer resources than real meat does. It takes around 1,800 gallons of water to produce just one pound of beef. And you can compare that to around 43 gallons of water for one pound of Beyond Meat. Fake meat uses a lot less land. Livestock uses up to 80% of global farmland, but it only provides 18% of calories. Plant-based meat uses up to 90% less land. According to a peer-reviewed article at the National Library of Medicine, over one third of the grain we grow on earth is fed to livestock. If the crop production currently used for animal feed and other non-food uses was instead directed to human consumption, it would create 70% more calories, which could feed up to 4 billion more people. Okay, so now that I've answered hopefully most of your questions as to why vegans would wanna eat fake meat and whether fake meat is even worth eating at all, I want you to answer one of mine. And I mean this sincerely. Why do you care? What difference does it make to you? Why does it bother you so much? 
What is it? What is it about it? Are you worried that I'm confused? Do you think I'm unwell? Does it hurt your feelings? Truly, somebody please tell me. Is it because you think it's it's hypocritical? I would say it's pretty akin to someone who's sober drinking non-alcoholic beverages or somebody who's quitting smoking chewing nicotine gum. Those aren't perfect analogies, but they're in the same ballpark. So hey, I mean, if you have the answer for that, I would love to hear it. So I think we did a pretty good job. My main takeaways from this whole exploration of fake meat, whether it is good or bad or hypocritical or not is basically overall for me I'm gonna stick to whole foods you know like I'll have a, a Beyond Burger here or there or I'll try a cool new vegan meat substitute just because I'm curious and sure I enjoy them they're a nice little treat for me but they're not something I eat every week I think that's just a good life lesson in general right balance and moderation it's gonna be the best diet you can make for yourself and leaning into whole foods wherever whenever you can obviously the answer is pretty simple if you're worried about how animals are treated in factory farming settings it's kind of a no brainer to go for fake meat over real meat. If you're concerned about the environment, fake meat wins over real meat. If you're worried about health, that's gonna totally depend on you. I can't answer that for you, and I'm not even gonna try, because I already know the health conversation is what's gonna give me the most negative comments. I'm already bracing myself for the comments on this video, because I just know it's gonna be a ripper. But you know what, that's okay. I'm happy to have the conversation. I'd love to see what you guys think. Let me know if you like fake meats, if you're a meat eater, or if you're a vegan, do you still eat a lot of fake meat or imitation meat? I'm curious. Um, but anyway, I hope you learned something. I definitely did. And maybe we all can just get along. Wouldn't that be nice? Anyway, with that, I bid you adieu. Uh, toodaloo. Bye, everyone. Thank you for being here. I will see you on the next one. Yeah, I'm so scared to read the comments.